Good morning, this is Dr. John Bennett, broadcasting from Miami Beach, home of Neurosurgical TV. Today we have a great pleasure of welcoming Roberto Herrera, a friend for a couple of years now. He does he does webcasts in Spanish and English. Uh, we've been with him to, uh, I think, in Pakistan. I don't know if he came to Yemen, but he, he goes all over the place to go to conferences. And we're really glad that he agreed to talk to us today. Uh, let, let me, uh, well, why don't we just go ahead, right ahead, uh, Roberto, and uh, let me get that. Let me get the mute here. Sometimes it's tough to handle a mute thing. Uh, yeah, but uh, Roberto, why don't we just go ahead and introduce yourself and on to your presentation, and thank you. Okay. Um, Jill Scream? Yeah, sure. There you go. Okay. Can you, can you see? Yeah, perfecto. Okay. Can you say where you practice and everything, Roberto? Okay. Um, I ready, Sean. Start my conference. Okay. Okay. Hey, um, good morning in my country. Um, now it is 8.30 in the morning. Um, um, it's a pleasure for me. Thank you, John. Thank you, um, my good friend, Ipe Cherian, for inviting me to, to this conference um, to stay together with uh, the other side, neurosurgeon from the other side of the world. I'm going to talk about the main goals in brain glioma surgery. I think neurosurgeons um, uh, have to, to agree, respect what we are uh, going to do when we are going to operate a glioma. Mm, with different tools, it, it is not important, but the important is the goal. What, uh, uh, how we are going to operate the glioma. And what do the guides say about the treatment, for example, in high-grade gliomas? The guides say that we have to do maximum safe resection feasible. And it is the same in low-grade glioma, maximum safe resection feasible in, in each patient that we operate, we are going to operate. Um, but when I talk about this, uh, many neurosurgeons, some people said, I can't remove a glioma completely without using interoperative MRI, without interoperative MRI. Um, and it is false. It is false. Um, in what the, do the biographies tell us about this? What the biography said? For example, Professor Raymond Sawasha, um, review the literature, the bibliography, um, in, in 10 years' time. And he saw that over the past decade, over the past decade, um, in, in some series of glioma surgery, the number of gross total resection has been limited to a mere 6.2 or 12% of the total. That means that 90% of, of that surgery were only partial resection, no complete resection of the tumor. And a lot of research after that um, Sawasha work um, have presented similar results. 32, 92% of, of remnant of tumor um, when the surgeon thought that he uh, had finished the, the operation. Uh, in, it's uh, very important this because we are not removing, we are not doing gross total resection in most of the surgeries that we are doing. 
Um, but uh, I am going to show the example of the best neurosurgeon of the, of the century, Professor Shasagi. If, if you um, uh, see the book, the, the last book, Micro Neurosurgery in four volumes, 1994, of Professor Shasagi, you could see this huge tumor here and, and with the small, uh, excellent operation, but with a few of tumor here, few of tumor retina, even in Professor Jasaki's surgery, no, nobody of one are uh, able to remove completely a tumor. That's why Professor, without the technology, without the new um, technology and, and that we, we can use at this moment. Uh, that's why Professor Shasaki in, in his book said that uh, he was convinced that we, in the near future, we um, will have modern operating room, computerized room with different technology into the operating room. And this is my big question. Is it the real result in, in the treatment of glioma. All of the patients will be dead um, before 10 years after we operated them. Or these values are based on incomplete surgical resection. This is my question. We have operated uh, more than 500 patients with glioma in our apartment. We use intraoperative MRI plus one or more uh, the other tools. Neuro navigation, brain mapping, neurophysiological monitoring, intraoperative ultrasonography, away surgery. We use all these, these tools. But the important is, it is agree with the goals of our surgery. Remove the tumor completely, gross total resection or partial resection, or biopsy. Some, some neurosurgeons argue in favor of the biopsy. Uh, the tools are important, are very important. I think the, um, if you have interoperative MRI, you have advantages. But if you um, don't have interoperative MRI, you, you have to do the best that you can do for this patient. You're using the other tools. Ultrason interoperative ultrasonography is very use uh, useful too. Uh, Peter Black in Boston, in a Brigham and Women's Hospital, was the first neurosurgeon um, who used interoperative MRI. Uh, the second country was Sherman, uh, then Finland, then Canada, and the fifth was, uh, was Argentina in our apartment. Uh, this is our operating room. We use this um, open magnet, 0.23 Tesla. Uh, you are invited to know my our operating room when you when you want. This is during a, a, um, a, um, a control, a check, uh, interoperative uh, checking, um, and I'm going to show you examples because many people said to me, "Oh, this is uh, um, every everybody have um, is isolated cases," but I'm going to show you several cases because there are not isolate, is, isolated cases. Um, I'm going to show you huge gliomas, huge um, high-grade gliomas. And how we use intraoperative MRI? For example, this tumor, this is not, this is a sample tumor. We can recognize this tumor when you open uh, high-grade glioma. We put the patient in surgical position. This is the, here you can see the magnet, uh, the patient with surgical fields, the magnet um, is this, like um, an assistant. Do the anatomy. Here we are operating very close to the magnet because it is a low field magnet. And we remove the tumor in the same way than we, we do uh, every day, and eh? we remove the tumor. But and in this moment, when the things 
look the same but are not the same here when we don't know if you are um, leaving tumor remnant here we put some marks on the bottom of the cavity and and, and we check the surgical step with an uh, interpret MRI we can repeat this many times as time as um, we need to do it and, and go on with the surgery, removing tumor with um, uh, ultrasonic uh, um, aspirator until that uh, the final moment in which we can see the marks that we uh, uh, put on the bottom of the cavity. Here is the mark, the mark here, and no more the tumor. And this is the patient. This is the way, this is the system of the, the best way to use an in, uh, interoperative uh, guide images. Uh, another case, eh? frontal and temporal lobe, bad tumor, and here you can see. This is, here you can see the, the scalp is open here. Um, this MRI was taken before uh, approach, before attack the tumor. Here, the second interoperative MRI control, we remove partially the tumor. More resection, mm, bigger resection, excuse me. And, and below, no more tumor in interoperative MRI. And you can see the same in sagittal, sagittal sequences, the same here. We, we, we um, are going to remove completely like this the tumor, and it is the same in axial plane. And here you, you can see we remove a big, completely frontal lobe, partial, uh, partially temporal lobe, and, and some piece of insula too. But this is the patient. He, he was a uh, chess player and he was very, with very good outcome more than three years after that surgery. This is not a good option. Watch and wait is not a good option in, in never kind of glioma. Here you can see this sample glioma, perhaps at this moment it was low grade glioma, 2003. But 2007, this tumor is bigger. And here, it took contrast, enhanced with contrast, and it is a high-grade glioma. It is impossible to help this patient. But we decided to operate October 2008, this huge tumor here, high-grade glioma. Because the patient was a, a young man, hmm, a big craniotomy, big craniotomy and we decide to remove this tumor but this is the the um, the brain surface and uh, um, i can see where is the path where the pathology is where the tumor begins or be begins or ends where is the tumor here this is interoperative mri we can see good resection this is surgical field and this is MRI three and a half years after surgery with no tumor, very good outcome of the patient, only with partial frontal lobe, temporal lobe resection and, and insular resection. But with this MRI three and a half years after the operation is with a patient with very good outcome and with no tumor. Uh, this, this is, uh, impressive. This is um, almost impossible to remove this tumor, but we decided to operate it on a plastic oligodendrocytoma, and this is the MRI after surgery plus radiotherapy plus chemotherapy. But this is the patient immediately postoperative. You can see the stitches on the, the scalp here, and, and this is the patient. Three years and five months post-operative survival. This is another concept. I think the tumor has no neurological function. 
Mm, when you do in mm, functional MRI, you can see the functional areas around the tumor, but never in the tumor. I think the tumor is not an eloquent area. We can see when we use brain mapping, the stitches, the, sorry, the, um, the marks uh, um, around the tumor, never in the tumor, inside the tumor, never. Another huge tumor, impossible to remove, to, to think and remove this tumor. Um, uh, you, you can see here this, this area, posterior area of the tumor. No problem with this, but what happened with this area of the tumor? But the patient was comatose, but without um, parisia, without hemiplegia, comatose with this, in, in comatose state, status with this tumor. We decided, uh, you can see a huge tumor here with contrast enhance in the middle. This is the surgical field. And this is the patient in the same years after surgery with this resection, uh, nucleus caudado, this big resection. This is the patient right after surgery, six months later. And three years after surgery with this MRI, you can see all, all the images and no tumor and uh, the same coronal and sagittal, sagittal uh, images. And here you can see the patient, very good condition, more than three years, completely uh, good life with, with, with babies in, in his home, um, 32 years old. Um, Three years and nine months, she died. Three, three years and, and nine months after surgery. But he um, was alive um, three years in, in very good condition, neurological condition. Uh, corpus callosum, high-grade glioma. We are operating this kind of tumor because we thought that when we operate in, in epilepsy surgery, we cut corpus callosum, corpus callosum, anterior, posterior, complete section of the corpus callosum. Why don't remove? If we, we, we can't cut, why we can't remove corpus callosum? And in this, we, we operated several cases with this kind of glioma, um, always when only one optic thalamic, thalamo uh, was um, affected. Now when the tumor is extended to the both optic thalamus or, 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 or subthalamus or hypothalamus. But in this tumor, we decided to remove it. We did a good resection. Hmm? A good, this is intraoperative MRI. And this is the resection of the tumor. And this patient, was alive for more than three years in very good condition. But this is, um, we, we, we can achieve more than this in high grade glioma. We can, I, I, I think the next uh, boons would be the, the um, um, what the oncologists or radiotherapeutics can, can um, will be able to do in the future. Um, more than this, it is impossible um, from our uh, side uh, as neurosurgeons. Um, Neurophysiological monitoring is very important. Um, and it is very important to the team. It is so important, the team like the technology. It is very important to have a trained team of neurosurgeon, radiology, sanitation, um, and you can uh, use um, all the tools that you need to remove the glioma. But in high grade glioma, we argue with 
uh, removed completely uh, all the tumor than we um, be able to remove. Um, this was an exceptional case in this tumor. We thought that it was a low-grade glioma, but this area was a GBM, high-grade glioma. We decided to remove it using uh, by mapping tool, we localize so central sulcus, we, we localize exactly the tumor here and here. Um, we comprove, we, we, um, we put some vitamin E pills to, to certify the location of the tumor here. And this is intraoperative MRI, the scalp is open here, and we remove completely this tumor. Uh, this is the surgical bed before and after the resection. And this is the patient in the postoperative. And this is the patient with GBM, seven years free of tumor after surgery. But it is an exceptional case. We presented this, this surgery in World Federation Neurosurgical Meeting in 2013. What about um, the goals in low grade glioma? I think our effort would be in this direction. In, in low grade glioma, we have to, to put the best of uh, our to remove completely low grade glioma. Mm, because it is possible that in some cases, a good surgery could be the cure of the patient. What the bibliography says about this? Most of the patients with incomplete low-grade glioma removal die within the first five or seven years after surgery from recurrence or malignant transformation of the tumor. Low-grade glioma uh, are like a, a, a little tiger in the living room in, in, in your home. If you leave him grow up, he will become a dangerous monster, and finally, he will kill our patients. Um, we have to remove it when, when you can do it. And the guidance say the same, maximal and, and safe resection possible as, as, um, as soon as better. Um, this is a low grade glioma, premotor area, left hemisphere. Mm. Here you can see the tumor. This is the MRI before the surgery. We localize the tumor. Here you can see in flare, in T1, T2. This is the surgical position. You can use neural navigation to localize the tumor, to program the, the craniotomy. Mm. This is before here we are operating. We are operating. The magnet is close to the, the surgical tail. Craniotomy, usual craniotomy. Some marks to, to determine the, the, the boundaries, the limits of the tumor. Interoperative MRI, first control. And this is the position of the patient inside the magnet, only moving the surgical tail one meter. Uh, this is the, the patient with the coils. This is the view from the um, control room. Control room. This is operating room. And here you can see the marks, the tumor. The the process is the same. Here you can see the tumor, the tumor, the same, the the the, the craniotomy, the same. And here we put some pills here, and we can see a little small remnant of tumor here, we remove it, another check, and, and until we can see the, these images with complete resection of the tumor, in coronal, in sagittal, complete resection of the tumor. Uh, here we have another, another difference. Mm. In glioma surgery is to operate away patients. I disagree with this. I think it is false. 
Uh, why? For example, in this book, this uh, Greenberg book, is a book that many young researchers read frequently. And in, in the chapter of low grade glioma, you can see interoperative mapping and awake craniotomy is recommended as a standard for glioma sizing. I disagree with this, uh, but many others uh, same, uh, have the same opinion. And um, Professor Dupont said, not image guided dissection. Why? If you use MRI before and after, why no intraoperative? Which is the reason? I, I disagree too with this, for example, no, uh, no microscope, no microscope. No. But when, when they show the results, they put inter MRI with tumor, MRI without tumor. Why no show this intraoperative into the operating room to avoid surprises? Um, I dis disagree respect the, mm, this uh, mapping techniques are the only, the, the only, the only solution. We have to use different tools, um, and we have to agree with the the goal of the surgery that it is remove. It, it is do the gross total resection using the best tool that you have in your hands, and and I think that in the near future could be that the interoperative MRI uh, would be the, 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 the gold standard in, in every operating room around the world to remove a, um, a tumor, a, a glioma. And, and the, um, to the neurosurgeon can left the operating room with this interoperative MRI uh, and ensure that he removed it, this tumor. Surgery with a white patient is, is a, an excellent tool too, but it cannot be considered the gold standard um, in glioma surgery because many patients cannot be operated away. And by the other way, it does not allow us to know if we remove the tumor completely or we left a remnant behind. And you cannot operate away more than 50% of the patient with glioma. We cannot operate this list of patients, infants, children, teenagers, very early patients with uh, excess in weight, um, with uh, mental disorders, um, very nervous, anxious, in prone position. You can't operate away patient in prone position, midline tumors. Um, um, when you put all of these cases together, you have more than 50% of the patient that you can't operate awake. You can't um, tell us about the, 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 the best, if the, only, the only solution is to operate away. I dis uh, disagree with this. For example, this case, we operate, the, it was um, it was um, pilocytic astrocytoma in the midline. I can't operate this patient away. And yes, I can use neural navigation, I can use interoperative MRI. And when, you, uh, when we use uh, neural navigation, we can uh, actualize the images um, with the, the, the navigation in this moment, in, in, in that moment, in, in uh, in, in real time, I'm, I, I can recalibrate the navigation with these actual images to prevent the brain shift. And this, this is the patient, and this is postoperative with very good resection. The patient in, in excellent outcome. Uh, this case, this was a little little girl, two years old baby. Um, she was operated by a, a great neurosurgeon in Europe from this tumor when she was two years old. But six months later, 
six, six months after this surgery, we received the girl, the, the baby, with this MRI, with this uh, remotion of the central area of the tumor, but with this difficult tumor. Here you can see, it's not a good tumor with this area here, here, um, in, in central area, central area. We decided, we decided to remove it. Uh, and here you can see, I, uh, here you can see, this is the, the, the girl, 10 days postoperative uh, during the winter, summer with, with uh, her family. Uh, this is the patient, three years postoperative here. The patient starting kindergarten, six years after surgery, six years, seven years postoperative with this huge cavity. But this is a patient, 14 years, very, very nice girl. Uh, here you can see 2017 um, MRI, complete resection, no more tumor, no regrowth of the tumor. This is a patient in, in Disneyland, um, 11 years free of tumor. And what, what would have happened with this resection? And, and um, against this complete gross total resection. It's not the same, the result, the follow-up um, of the patient when we do partial resection in low grade glioma, um, respect than when we, we have the possibility to remove completely this tumor. The other, the other, uh, some neurosurgeons said, just total resection uh, doesn't matter, Meg, because uh, all the patients die, no matter what we do. Uh, it's, it's not useful to remove completely. It's, 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 not, it's not good. Okay, it is false. This is one of our first patients operated in July 2000. He was operated in another, another department, but he, um, another department, this is mine with a uh, peer one assistant on that time. And the patient was operated in another department and he came to me with this tumor remnant here. And his, his mother is neurosurgeon. And he, uh, she decided, uh, please, doctor, I, I, I want you to remove completely this. Um, uh, I need you to remove this tumor. We use intraoperative MRI. One of our, I, I think it was our second case on July 2000. And this is the MRI, postoperative control with no tumor, no more tumor. 10 years postoperative, this is the, baby, the, the, the boy. He was nine years old when, when we operated him. And this is the, 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 the guy we use, and this is the area of this remnant was. And this is the patient, 19 years after surgery. He, he is a, a man with his family. Um, and this is my question. A good surgery could be the cure in these patients. The results that we know are based in incomplete resection. What happens if we start, in, start to, to operate and remove completely the tumors in advance? This case, for example, uh, it is impossible that a way surgery can, can give me some help. Um, it is a tumor localized in, in basal area of temporal lobe on the right. I can map in nothing in this area. No motor function, no language function. But yes, the images, the intraoperative MRI is a good guy. Uh, and this is the, the patient uh, postoperative. Uh, um, Yes, precisely. 
this is a patient completely normal. This is cured. I don't know if she is cured, but but she is 13 years after surgery and without tumor. Low grade glioma operated was operated 2006. No isolated cases. Mm, the most of our patient ha has these results. 2006, 2019, no more tumor. This is the patient, excellent outcome, no neurological dysfunction. This was a particular case in a patient with two tumors, two log gliomas, oligodendroglioma. One of them in temporal, right temporal lobe, the other in left temporal, uh, parietal, parietal lobe. We decided to remove in the first time the temporal lobe tumor, and then we mm, removed the, the parietal tumor using, um, using uh, electrocortical stimulation because the tumor was close to the motor area. Estoy filmando, Roberto. Mm -hmm. ah, 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 cortical stimulation, this is, here is the tumor, this is, this is motor area. Okay, this is the patient seven years post-operative. Um, he, with, with his first son, this is the post-operative MRI, no tumor here, no tumor here. Uh, this is the patient 10 years post-operative, this is the patient 12 years post-operative, and his MRI. This 14 years post-operative with this, this MRI with no tumor here, no tumor here, no tumor. And this is the patient for the last picture he sent to me with no tumor in temporal lobe, no tumor in parietal lobe. Another case, frontal, frontal oligodendroglioma in, in, in post, uh, in, we detected this remnant with intraoperative MRI, remove it, and this is postoperative MRI, the patient normal life and working 12 years postoperative. In, in broca area tumor, important tumor here, we decide to remove it, no awake surgery, only guided by images, hmm? functional MRI before surgery, of course, the test, psychological test before surgery, but no in, in the surgery, during the surgery, this is, the surgical field and, and uh, the uh, MRI complete resection of the tumor. Lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, y sábado. No language disorders. No, no language disorders. And this is the patient 10 years after surgery, lowering glioma without tumor. Uh, in insular area, it is very important to have in, uh, MRI to see. Uh, the limits of the limits of our resection. It was a baby three years old. Three years old. Uh, you, it's impossible to operate the wake. It's uh, impossible to brain mapping with in this in this case, and and it is not impossible to use intraoperative MRI. You can see this tumor. Yeah, this is the first intraoperative control with this remnant. At this, at, in in this moment, we stop the surgery. Talk um, uh, all the neurosurgeons with the radiology, with neurology, neurophysiologists, and decided um, how much of the tumor we are going to remove um, um, and, and go on with the surgery. Here you can see complete resection, eh? and, and the baby, the baby here is completely normal. I think two days, three days after <laughs> surgery. <laughs> the intraoperative images give us the uh, possibility of removing completely the tumor and be sure that we respect the boundaries, the, the limits of the tumor area. And if we remove completely the tumor, in our experience, if you preserve the boundaries, the limits, and remove only tumor, the patient will be very, very well, very fine. And this is the same patient, several years. Um, we, we control this baby every year in the children's hospital in Buenos Aires. Uh, he is in, in, in excellent condition with normal, normal school, 
completely, completely well. Insular tumors and watch and wait is not an option to in, in, in low grade glioma. Here you can see this small tumor and this huge tumor uh, a few years after. Um, we decided to operate this tumor, which is impressive, a, good, uh, um, a huge tumor. We operated this uh, lady in, uh, in 2007, and here you can see three years post-operative with a light, slight hemiparesia here, but with no remnant tumor in the MRI. And this is the same. It is very useful. We have more than uh, 50 patients operating with insular, with, with uh, biomas localized in in insular area, mm, we use transylvian exposure exposure of the trans, transylvian fissure exposure of the exposure of the insula, and and we remove the tumor in the same way like we we do it normally. Mm. Here we are using uh, subcortical electric stimulation to 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 detect. The, the, the corticospinal uh, fibers. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the surgical field. This is the area of the tumor, tumor area, tumor resection, until we, we, we can remove completely the tumor, preserving the, the brain, normal brain. And this is the patient with a few days and several months after surgery. Okay. I'm finishing. Uh, two minutes more. Oh, um, okay, Roberto. Do you? Do I, you I think. Okay, I, I think the goal is complete resection in low grade glioma, because if we make a subtotal resection, here you can see. In 10 years' time, we will be losing nearly 50% of our operating patients. You operate a low grade glioma, remove, we, you, you do a partial resection. The patient is very good, or only one day in intensive care, three days, four days, the patient in, in, in his home, uh, home with his family, the family happy, the doctor happy, but this same patient, three years later, four years later, five years later, um, will have um, regrowth of his tumor, um, of, of your tumor, and, and the patient in before 10 years will be dead. It's not a good solution to, to do partial resection. In our experience, we have we achieved gross total resection in 81.5 percent of our cases. Not in ten, in 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 hundred uh, four hundred. No. If we left aside um, three lowers glioma, huge glioma, low grade glioma, and and gliomas. Uh, what was operated in another apartment before our surgery? This statistic, this number, um, grow up to 91 percent of the cases in, in which we achieve gross total resection. But this is our experience. Here you can see um, when we achieve complete resection. Talking in low-grade glioma, of course, talking about low-grade glioma, when we achieve gross total resection, near 70% of our patients uh, take into account uh, kaplan meier cure, um, will be able to, to, to cross the 10 years uh, free of tumor and in very good and normal condition, free of illness. But none of the patient with no complete partial uh, biopsy or partial resection, none of them had 
a life expectancy of 10 years. All of them will be done um, before 10 years, 10 years after surgery. That's why I think this is not the final evolution of the glioma. And we, and, and the main uh, goal, the main objective in low grade glioma, um, we think that it is complete removal of the tumor to try to the cure the patient, not left Renma with a patient in perfect condition because in, in th three, four, five, seven years, this patient will be dead. Um, of course, we argue in favor of complete resection with minimal or no permanent neurological dysfunction. Uh, okay, this is my last slide. Never want to be operated for a glioma. Um, one question, important question that many people uh, ask um, in, in after our meeting is, can interpret MRI, it is necessary or it is not necessary? Um, the best uh, answer for this question, the best answer for this question that the people ask um, uh, in, in, the, in glioma surgery, um, was, uh, I think, was um, uh, this answer for Professor Sami. I want you listen, Professor Sami, without having one the control during their uh, surgery. Therefore, you don't need to discuss about that. Is it necessary or not necessary? If you have it, it's an advantage. If you don't have it, we cannot change with a right surgery, whatever is possible to do it. But we are happy that we had this opportunity, and um, and I uh, this is a brain suite in our department that was the solution. With this is the control room and solution that that we operate in the same room, but we turn and we turn the, the patient with the head inside of the uh, of MRI and make the. But now we have developed another solution, two rooms with a solution that in the middle is an intraoperative MR, right and left side, we have two operating theaters. And uh, soon I will have these uh, operating theaters in Tehran and in China. I think this answer that uh, if it is necessary, if it is, if it's not necessary, it's not an important question. The question is uh, how we can do with the glioma, and and that neurosurgeon agree in mm, remove completely the glioma using the tool that you have in in his hands. If uh, like as Professor Sami uh, said, if you have intraoperative MRI, you have advantages, but if you it, you can change it and you have to operate your patient doing the best that you can do for, for them. Um, thank you very much and I hope sometime we, we can uh, see um, soccer again. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, Roberto, thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, okay, we'll open the floor right away. I'm sure there's lots of questions. So just speak up. If Hello. You... Go ahead. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Go ahead. Hello. 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 Yeah, go Thank ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Hello. Yes. Thank you, Professor, for your presentation. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Thank you for, for your president's uh, presentation. Uh, I have a two questions. One of them, do you use intraoperative fluorescence 5LA? And that is the message better for total remove, intraoperative MRI or uh, intraoperative fluorescence. And second, my question, most of the case in your practice, you use the intraoperative MRA during the one patient's operate, operating time for taking the uh, tumor. 
two times, three times, five times. Thank okay. you. Uh, um, John, can I see? Uh, okay. Hey, you can want I a screen share? Yeah, you want a screen share again? Um, oh, well, I, want, well, I want to. I want to see the the, the speaker, the people. I I can't yes, see the sir. people. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here, sir. Okay, I can't see him. Yes, I can't. Yes. I can't see you. Yes. Uh, first question. First question. No, no. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. I understand. I understand. I'm going to I, I, to answer I, you, I, but I I like to see you, but I can't see. Oh, no, no problem. Yeah. I, my, I can't. My, uh, first, uh, my name is Rustam Bek. I am from Uzbekistan. Okay. Uh, the first question. I uh, we don't have because in our country is not authorized. Um, it's not uh, allowed the um, floresina yet. But I think it is very. It is, it is another excellent tool in high grade gliomas, but it's not so useful in low grade gliomas or in in gliomas that uh, no enhance with contrast, but. I, I don't have experience with this, but I know the techniques, of, of course, and I think it is a good tool. I think it is a good tool. Main in, in high grade glioma. To respect the second, the sec, the second question, um, in, 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 in the case of this little girl, two years old baby that we operated, we used eight interoperative MRI control, eight. Um, uh, you have a, a, a cure of learn. Um, nowadays, I think with, with two, two interoperative MRI um, or, or three interoperative MRI, you can remove completely the, t the tumor and be sure um, with the last MRI that you remove completely. Um, and it took, it took 20 minutes each interoperative MRI control. That's, uh, this is one of the advantages of low gray, uh, low field magnet, um, that we can move only one meter and, and 20 centimeters the, the, um, the surgical table and, and we are talking the image in, in a few minutes. Okay, thank you, thank you for answer. Thank you for presentation, thank you. Okay, more comments, questions? Uh, can I ask? Uh, uh, go ahead, Marco. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you, Professor Herrera, for the presentation. John it was absolutely amazing. My question is: uh, uh, When you perform an interoperative MRI, you use also uh, I, I, I can hear. I can hear you. I, I can. Yeah, there, sorry, there, are, there are noise, John. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. These people are muted here. Uh, Okay, okay, you should be okay now. Okay, can I go on? Yeah, go ahead, Rocco. Okay, yes. uh, first of all, I wanna thank you very much for your presentation, Professor It was absolutely amazing, uh, uh, and uh, 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 results uh, are uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, my question is, uh, when you perform an interoperative MRI, do you inject also the uh, contrast enhance uh, uh, gadolinium? Uh, yes. Okay, and in uh, there is there any risk of a false positive uh, <laughs> gadolinium? Uh, oh, um, yes, yes, I understand the question. Um, in high grade gliomas, uh, we um, always use gadolinium, and the time that we uh, can see gadolinium in MRI is four hours. If we Go um, uh, go up uh, more than four hours, three three um, um, fifty minutes or four hours. We uh, it is necessary to repeat the gadolinium doses. Uh, the minimal doses that uh, you need to see the tumor, and in many low grade gliomas, uh, which don't enhance with contrast, we don't use. Uh, gadolinium, don't use, no, we remove it, um, or we, we do anatomical resection um, and we take T1 like a guide, as, as our guide. 
T1. We remove the tumor in T1, no in, in flare. Why? Because if you remove in flare, when you mm, uh, get the new MRI, you can see another time <coughs> um, a, a new flare around the, the tumor. You remove this around millimeters of tissue and get the new MRI and you again can see flare, hyperintensity in flare. We decided to remove the tumor several years ago on T1 and all the result that you uh, saw was removing the tumor on T, take um, the T1 like a guide. Perfect. Thank you very much. Bro. Okay, very good. Abilash, you had a comment or question? Abilash Her Herodas from Tampa? Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you, Professor. That was a fantastic talk. Uh, um, I just had a question about uh, intraoperative uh, shift. Yes. Uh, during MRI, how do you, uh, what has been your experience, your learning curve with that? Okay. And how do you... This is a good question. But um, the, um, the big shift is uh, impossible to prevent um, when, you, when you use near navigation with the MRI before and uh, talking before the surgery, uh, given before the surgery. Um, in our case, we use the new, the, the real-time images because we did, uh, we, we do the MRI in this, in this moment. And we are, um, we can see the shift. We can uh, take care of the shift because Mm, we see the tumor in this exactly moment and we see the brain surprise in this moment if he move if it move uh, 20 millimeter millimeter 30 millimeter we can see it in this moment and you can can see it uh, when you use navigation you can't cor correct this Mm, because you are using the MRI that you you got before the surgery. Okay. Me? Thank you. Okay, next question. Uh, we have a couple of people. Let's Hello. See. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, we do. Thank you. Uh, I'm Dr. Ait Bin Ali from Marrakesh, Morocco. Uh, thank you very much, Professor, for this very nice lecture. Uh, can you please make some comments about uh, brainstem glioma surgery? Uh, yes, we have operated some glioma, uh, brainstem glioma, with, um, with interoperative MRI. The, um, Pronostic, the outcome in lower glioma is not the same, but uh, we use intraoperative MRI, for example, in some huge meningiomas that um, affecting the, the brain stem, or uh, to guide some biopsies um, of uh, intrinsic tumor of the brain, brain stem. Um, but I think we have only two cases about um, glioma uh, localized in, in the brain stem. Thank you very much. Okay, the next question. Hi. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Rafik. I'm a young neurosurgeon from Algeria. Welcome back. Thank you, John. Thank you, Professor, for uh, amazing presentation. I want to ask uh, about your opinion about uh, when to operate low-grade glioma. When, you, when the low-grade ah. glioma is diagnosed good, or good. when it's symptomatic? No, well, no, well question too. I think the, um, uh, the sooner the better. 
Um, I think you have to operate the tumor when he is uh, small, small, like the example of the tiger, the, 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 the baby tiger. Um, if you detected a brain glioma um, and you, you think it is a low grade glioma, I recommend it to remove it um, as soon as you, you can do. Um, because you take in, into account that in three, four, five years, this low grade glioma could be a high grade glioma. Um, Everybody has some case in, in, in low-grade glioma that we wait for several years, but finally it will be a, a high-grade glioma or a huge tumor um, and, and the consequence to remove it uh, would be very, very poor, very, very bad. Um, I recommend it to remove low-grade glioma when you detect it. The, the tumor. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay, next question, comment. Uh, thank you for the presentation, uh, Professor. Uh, I'm Dr. Khalif from Kenya. I wanted to uh, get your opinion on the use of intraoperative ultrasound. Uh, what is your opinion on that? And number two, the concept that uh, High-grade gliomas are, by definition, systemic disease, and they are not localized. Okay. Uh, from, the, from your experience, we see that these patients can be treated. Some of them can live up to 10 years without the tumor recurrence, which is, uh, which is very encouraging. OK. Uh, ultrasound is a very, use, very useful tool. It's, it's, um, it's a, uh, I, I think after interoperative MRI, the best tool is ultrasound. Uh, we have experience with ultrasound, um, but neurosurgeon, I, 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 said, I say that neurosurgeon are not, um, um, we, we are not um, seeing um, ultrasound every day, but we see um, MRI every day, and we are more family, uh, familiar side with uh, MRI that with ultrasound, but ultrasound is a very, very the, the modern ultrasound a very good tool to remove the tumor, um, and you can detect the, the difference between uh, tumor and normal brain in, in, in most of the cases. It's a good tool. Um, the second question was sorry. The, the concept that uh, high-grade gliomas are, by ah. definition, a systemic disease by the time we discover Okay, it. okay. Um, we know the, the works of um, Patrick Kelly and Dr. Um, um, bueno, um, the, the works of, um, from France, um, and and we know that uh, glioblastoma is uh, systemic, uh, has systemic uh, spreading in the in the in the brain. Um, but uh, I like to think um, in the same way that what Dandy think uh, thought uh, in 1928. I, I, I think that I'm neurosurgeon, we are neurosurgeon. And if we receive a patient with a tumor, we have to remove the tumor. Because there are works in, in what demonstrated um, that if you do a biopsy or partial resection, it's the same result in high-grade glioma. The difference is when you can remove when you can do gross total resection. Then if you are going to do partial resection, it's better you do biopsy and you send the patient to, to his home the other day. No, no intensive care, no problem with the family, no, no craniotomy. Biopsy and, and go home. Because it is demonstrated that biopsy 
of a, a, in a high grade glioma. And partial resection has the same result. The difference, uh, you can do the difference when you can remove a, more than 90% of this high grade glioma plus radiotherapy plus temosalamide in that uh, nowadays is a very good tool to um, like complement in high grade glioma. Okay, very good. It's answered my question. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Your question. Okay, thank you. Okay, good interaction here. Um, thank you very much, oh. uh, Doctor. Uh, thank you Go very ahead. much, Professor Herrera. My name is Dung Guga, a resident in neurosurgery in Nigeria. Uh, thank you very much for the beautiful presentation. Um, my question is, after these beautiful resections, which uh, you are able to achieve, some years down the line, do you still have cases of recurrence of these high-grade gliomas? particularly, and for those that you said died some years down the line, what were the causes of mortality? Was it recurrence or was it some other uh, problem? Because I noticed in a number of your patients, five, oh. six, seven years down the line, they were still having no recurrence at all from, from, from the follow-up MRIs. So did you yes. record recurrence in some of them eventually? Yes, uh, the patients die from recurrence in, in most of the cases from recurrence. Um, in some cases, we, we, um, we want to, our objective is um, extending the life in the patient until three years. When we have recurrence, uh, we view the new MRI and we decided if this patient, patient have a new chance to operate. If, if I can reoperate the patient, we decided to reoperate. But it is not the same because in, in most of the cases, the tumor is in the midline or, or mm, more extended in, in, in more than one lobe in, the, in, the, in this hemisphere or, or, or cross over the, the midline to the other side. Um, it's, it is not the same result when you reoperate the patient that in the, after the first surgery. When the first surgery, in most of the cases, we achieve three years survival. Um, repeat, with radiotherapy and temozolomide after surgery. But when we reoperate, we can get one year more, one more year um, survival in, in, in many patients but no more than this. Okay, thank you. Please, one more question. What, what's your protocol? What's your protocol for post-operative follow-up MRI? How regularly do you conduct this uh, follow-up MRIs? Uh, John, ¿qué me pregunta cuál es el protocolo? John? Yes, él dice que cuando tiene un MRI más después, cuando es su protocolo. Ah, ah, ok, ok, ah, ok. Ah, de, 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 um, we, um, in the high grade and, and, and low grade, it's the same protocol. We did, we do uh, MRI the first month, at three months, six months, and, and the year, and then um, during the first five years, we did uh, we do uh, in MRI control one time each year. A year. Um, pardon, uh, sorry, until the fifth year, we do one MRI each six months, and after five years operated, one MRI each year, um, in some cases, in 20 years after surgery. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Very good. Look, other questions, comments? It's good interaction today, Roberto. Okay. Yeah, buena interacción hoy. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Very, Del very, Toro Mundo, the Africa. I'm happy with this conference and with the, with taking contact with many surgeons and young surgeons around the world. 
uh, Sean. Thank you for your works in this. In this. Well, I think I hope you, you continue, I, and I hope that we get people like Yuha and other people doing a lot now because there are so many residents at home now. Yeah, this, this, yeah. This, so this will never happen again in our history, probably. <laughs> okay. Yes. The world. The the world. The the whole world has many good people and many good neurosurgeon, mainly the young neurosurgeon, but we have uh, very, very bad politics, but the, the rest of the people are very good people. Yes, okay. Okay, I guess we'll wrap it up because we're going on to uh, Dr. Goel. Thank you very much, Roberto, and we look forward to having you uh, back on. And thank you thank very you. much for your time. Thank you for all, thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs>